Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D hyphen Oracle. Dot com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim Odd, what's going on? Well, I think we turned the corner to the upside, so let's look at um, we'll look at the S and P's first. Cool, man. Um, all right, yeah. Let's go to that chart one, which is that Zwag breath thrust indicator. Oh yeah, man. I'm digging this. Okay, now pay attention yeah. here, folks. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> all right. Uh, ZBT is just because this is wag breath. For, you say that fast three times. You can't okay. do hey, it. ZBT is where it's at, man. I like it, Tim. I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, anyhow, uh, on April 18th, this indicator turned up from below 40. And this indicator is actually, I better describe it what it is, but it's the bottom window. And what it is is the NYSE advancing issues uh, divided by NY total issues. And you take that times. <laughs> Uh, ten day average, and so it's it's a ratio type thing. Yes. So it kind of measures the up volume against the total volume for what it does on a ten day average. And again, we hit below. It turned up last Thursday below forty, and so it needs to reach a point or a point. At, it turned up below point four last Thursday and needs to get to point six in ten in ten trading days. Well, ten trading days is next Wednesday, May 1st. So we got uh, all this week, yes. uh, which is basically three days, and uh, actually three days next week. So we're still, you know, but uh, when I made this chart a couple hours ago, it's point five six, and it needs to only get to point six zero. so we're going actually pretty fast. But we need, in general, for the market to hold up. If it went back down and tested uh, the recent low we here we had a couple of, or last Friday, then this indicator may not get there. But if we hold or, you know, trade sideways for a couple of days and keep rallying, most likely we'll get there. And I think, you know, I think we, we probably will. And if we do, these, these, uh, ZBTs don't happen in downtrends. They happen in uptrends. And a lot of times, uh, I got them, the red line, on the on the chart, this yes. chart goes back actually it looks about three years or better. Are times when the ZBT hit minus below forty, and the blue lines are when it hit uh, point point six. And so that consolidation we had in two thousand twenty two and part of two thousand twenty three, you had three ZBTs in that time frame. So that was a bullish sign that the market was not making. A consolidation for more down. It was making a bottom for an up. Then last October we had a, another trigger um, signaling the bottom, and the market really took off. So we may get something similar again in the next couple of three days. You know, today is actually a good day if we can have this another couple of good days over the, say next. If we can have a couple, two more good days in the next five six days, we'll probably get it. Yeah, no, so, I saw anyhow. last last because last night, you know, it had already got to fifty, right? So it's at fifty six now, right? I mean, because I was yeah. looking at your newsletter, and you know, folks, you want to pay attention to this because Tim turned us on to this. I remember the one in October, Tim. Remember we were watching, and, and it went right. The yeah, it went. yeah, right, yep. right, right. Yeah, so yeah, because uh, uh, the lines, well, the, the software I use, kind of these lines move around. But in general, yeah, we October of last year you nailed that bottom. You know, it uh, yeah. really pretty good. So, um, so we may get another one. May get a you know, it's kind of a sign of strength thing, which is always yes, is always nice. So let's uh, flip to chart two. Okay, we're kind of skip around here a little bit. Yeah, this is cool. a monthly yeah. uh, SPX. Uh, second window down from the top. The only thing I want to point out on this is when 50% of the trading range closes above the upper monthly upper Bollinger Band, a lot of times you'll get a consolidation in the next month. And I circled all of them going back to 2017. So it's fairly rare, but when you get them, you know, the market's just going up too fast and needs to consolidate. Yes. So now we're getting the consolidation. And so, uh, but if you go to the second window up from the bottom, okay, you got the uh, SPX VIX ratio. This is on a monthly time frame, not a weekly time frame. Yes, and the uh, only thing I want to point out here, uh, the, the kind of the 
pink areas are times when the S&Ps were making higher highs and this ratio is making lower highs. A lot of times they come at, at intermediate term highs. And uh, if you notice in the blue area right here, this ratio made higher highs as the S&Ps made higher highs, even though we did pull back, you know, April so far. Right. On a monthly time frame, there's really not a divergence here. So That's kind of amazing, no, actually, there's right? No, <laughs> there, there's what? That's kind of amazing, actually, when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. it's it's, it's uh, So the monthly time frames are still uh, uh, bullish here, so they're not... So we're just kind of having a time out and an upcurrence, how I'm kind of looking at it. Yes. So let's go to chart three. Okay. And uh, this is a weekly SPX. And uh, I wanted to point out uh, the second window up from the bottom is the SPX VIX ratio again. And I just pointed out that uh, going back to that late 2021 high, early 2022, that ratio made lower highs as the SPs made higher highs. And looks like about August of, of that same year, the market was going up, that ratio was going down. But anyhow, the, the bottom window or the second window up, if, if you get acceleration in anything, it's usually a bad sign. So it's kind of like a parabolic move, and you can apply it to indicators, too. So if you get something going too fast, and I use the Bollinger Band, it seems to work really well. If you get above or below the Bollinger Band on a daily, weekly, or even a monthly, it depends what time frame you're looking at, a lot of times you get a consolidation uh, as far as a, uh, up goes, or if you're going down, you, you'll get uh, some sort of a, a bottoming pattern. Yes. And uh, what I want to point out here on the VIX, I pointed out the times when the VIX got above its upper Bollinger Band, and this is on a weekly time frame. Okay. And I, I circled them all going back. If you notice, they all came at lows. Last time we had the Bollinger Band below, is, or the uh, VIX above its upper Bollinger Band, or the SPX uh, below its lower Bollinger Band, it came right at the October low of last year. Well, the same thing happened just uh, over the last, uh, actually last week. The Bollinger Band, look at the bottom window there, is above its upper Bollinger Band. Oh, I can see it. It blew and, right by it. Right. Wow. Yeah. 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 So it went down too quick. I mean, it kind of, the decline kind of actually, you you nailed it. You say we're going to that gap, and and I uh, started getting bullish. Up, I hear the music. Hey, just I'll stay hold. right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 265, NASDAQ up 256, S&Ps are up 60. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and prowling with us. And don't forget, folks, Tim's got a great newsletter. You can get hold of him every trading day at Oyd, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. Tim, you know, it's amazing, man. And you've been showing us this. Like on this downdraft right here, this downdraft was like, was so fast. It, you know, it's, I mean, we don't know whether it's over, but it's so intriguing that you didn't come down that much. You went to the gap, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I did enough. Now I want to go up again. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Matter of fact, I seen this kind of a type. Uh, actually, I got a. Uh, you nailed it. So uh, I'm assuming uh, you were getting long in that gap area. But anyhow, uh, I did. Yes, back I did. Back in yeah. 19, um, oh, I forgot. 19 or um, 2019, going into. December 24th low, I got a bicycle on uh, on the ticks and trend, that ratio we, we talked about before where the trend has to close above 1.2 and the ticks have to yes. close minus 300. Anyhow, I got that combination on, uh, uh, I don't know, anyhow, the exact same thing happened. The, the market went down. This indicator on, on uh, number three uh, uh, chart same indicator gave me the same bicycle as the one back in that 2019. I thought that was really interesting. The market kind of repeats itself, is what I'm making my point here. Yes. But, uh, uh, but anyhow, uh, let's, let's go on that because I can get off tangent here. We're going okay, I'm, re the, I'm ready. The we got, we, go ahead. So, yep. Yeah. All right, let's go, to, let's go to the next chart here. Okay. Uh, okay, this is kind of, we talked about this before. Uh, this is a monthly chart on the SPX. Yes. Uh, if you notice, uh, we were only trade 50% of the move up from the uh, the COVID crash of 2000, uh, 
20, uh, yeah, 2020, March 20, we were traced 50, you know, the whole thing's a head and shoulders bottom, which has a projection up around 5,700, which is about, you know, a good 10% higher than where we are right now, give or take. And I want to point out on the bottom again, you got a divergence back at the uh, 2022 high and back at the 2020 high. The market was going up, making higher highs. That ratio was making lower highs. And again, this time around, the ratio was making higher highs along with the S&Ps. So it didn't determine that the market was going to make an intermediate term high. So I'm thinking this is just a, a, a timeout and an uptrend. And I think that 5,700, if not better, is still what we'll see before the year's out. So um, I think intermediate term, I think the market looks fine. I don't think there's anything really to worry about. You know, and I think the decline is probably not going to let you in, or not decline, but uh, the current advance, I don't think they're going to let you in, because I don't think there's going to be a big pullback of any consequence here. I think the ZBT is just going to kick in here in the next couple of days, and things are going to keep on going. Yeah, so, well, you know what's but, amazing is that, you know, folks, and, and, and if, you, if you look at the cues, what happened with the Qs, folks, okay, and the Qs are leading the market, the NDX is leading the market. The Qs, man, came right back to where the last time we broke topside from, like the week of January 19th. And it came back with lighter volume. And it's like, okay, man, that's it. Is, is that really all you want to do? So it was pretty cool in the context of how this thing shook out. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, man, if this is going to be it, this is going to be it. So, yeah. um it's it, yeah. it, it, and, you know, plus you know politics has a little bit to do with it too you know this is a, the year of election yes and so they're not going to kill the market you know right it's, it's it's you know at best it may go side or at worst it may go sideways but you're not going to see a big decline here of any consequence so um let's talk about the gold market a little bit oh well, yeah man they try to kill that yesterday okay let's go let's take a look at it yeah, okay it's, uh, yeah this is pretty good chart five I have it. And uh, I got, this is, this doesn't really pick out the bottoms and tops per se, but it catches, you know, the trend. So I just designed it to, to the trend. And, you know, all that blue area. Yes. You know, the, bot the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume for GDX. That's, right. That indicator seems to work well. The next one above it is the advanced decline for GDX, but it doesn't seem to work as well. So I stick with the up-down volume. And what's happening right now, I got squares, you know, GDX, which is the top chart there. I see that, yeah. Square around where we currently are. Right. And we're at a, a breakout line across that. That breakout line I goes know. back to 2020. So, so it's, a, it's a big line. And uh, we're attacking, or we're at it right now, right smack at it. Well, what's, if you go down to the bottom GDX, that 50-day average, now it's 50-day average, so... That's um, what, what two, two and a half, half months. months of trading yeah, per right. day. Yes. So two, uh, two and a half. Yeah, about two and a half months of trading. I used other, uh, like I used six two days, and you know fifty days seems to work the best. But if you notice, we had a spike here over the last couple of days in that indicator. You see a big spike up. Yes. That bottom indicator. Well, that's that's strength. So when that indicator is going up. Is showing that actually, even though the market hadn't done anything yet, it's going sideways here. Okay. You had a big bulge in that indicator, so it's gaining strength right smack at where it should be if you're going to see a sign of strength through that, you know, call it a neckline or through that red dotted uh, trend right. line. So I'm thinking we're not going to back away from that trend line, but we're actually going to bust through it because of that indicator is actually gaining strength. It's not weakening here, it's actually gaining strength. So I'm thinking we're going to pop through. Uh, I'm thinking this, uh, you can't really tell it on this chart, but to me it's a, it's a five wave up from the um, March low. I don't know, you can probably, if you look at GDX, uh, you know, we're screwing around with a wave four right now. Yes. That, 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 I'm thinking that's what's going on. Then we got wave five coming because we got a surge in the up-down volume indicator. Uh, surging up, you know, up to a new recent high. So um, I think you're going to gain strength there, even though GDX is not doing a whole lot today. It's kind of really hadn't done nothing over the last, you know, couple of weeks or so. Kind of well, flipped sideways. So I'm thinking this is a wave four 
and uh, then you'll have a wave five through that neckline then maybe we'll get some sort of a consolidation and so, what is amazing uh, I, tim i think we're gonna get a... go ahead no what is amazing also is that you know we had gold gold was down 70 bucks yesterday well pre-market today folks gold was down a good 45 dollars and Wow. With that context, though, Tim, what happened is this. I'm up and I'm looking. I'm saying, I said, all the gold stocks are going to be killed again pre-market, right? They weren't. So gold was down at that 2403 this morning, right? And I'm pulling up South Africa first because South Africa is trading, folks, okay? South Africa, you know, how many wasn't, how many was doing fine? GFI was okay. I'm saying to myself, okay, this is really strange. So that is, is basically certifying what exactly what you're saying because it's a mind blower that they weren't down and then as soon as the market opened gold was still down 20 bucks but the equities themselves you know were flat and i says oh this is really interesting and particularly for the gold market <laughs> i yeah, mean we I know i mean it, it's you know they love to take that apart and there's so someone was in there buying man you know that's even before we opened so pretty cool yeah, yeah. stay right there folks tim and i are coming right back we have the Dow up 259, Nasdaq's up 246, S&Ps are up 60. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. Okay, Tim, I'm ready. All right, so, you know, chart five says because of the bottom window there, the up-down volume getting strength, there's probably some short-term strength going to come into GDX. So let's see where the momentum's going to, you know, how the momentum charts are doing. Okay. So, uh, chapter, or, uh, Page six. Yes. It, this is a weekly uh, GDX uh, up down volume. That's the bottom window. And the next one, higher window, is GDX advanced decline. So that's the whole market. This up down volume, advanced decline, all combined in, into a uh, uh, easy to look at chart. Yes. And, and this doesn't try to catch the bottom or top, but does catch the main trend. And this is a weekly, not the monthly. We'll look at the monthly next chart. Okay. But right now, we're, at, we're actually above both mid Bollinger Bands, and that's when the signal is generated. It's, it's not a perfect chart, because you go back to 2023, it did get above the mid Bollinger Band, but came back down. But we're back above the mid Bollinger Band on both indicators right now. Not a lot. You yeah. can't really see it by the chart. But if you do the numbers, you're up a no, little bit. I can bit. see it so slightly. If the GDX can... just holds here, and go, or goes higher, uh, then most likely this indicator will remain on the buy signal. So the weeklies right now are on a buy signal. So uh, chart number seven yep. is the monthly. And so this is the monthly time frame. You can see uh, the monthlies have not closed above the mid-Bollinger band yet. Right. So um, will it, you know, for that to happen, GDX needs to remain at least stable here for another month, maybe two, because, again, this this momentum charts are not designed to catch the bottom or top, but it is meant to catch the 80% of the, the rise. It yes. won't catch the top, it won't catch the bottom, but it'll catch the, the mid-range. So I'm thinking we're going to close, you know, sometime in the next couple of months, close above that mid-Bollinger band. If we do, then you're looking for most likely a multi-year rally. Real action. So, That's right. I like it. Yep. Tim, it's always a pleasure. Right. You have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Have a good one. Take care, man. Stay right. Uh, well, yeah, Tesla's coming out with numbers after the close, folks. Come back and visit uh, uh, us tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Have a great one. Have a safe one, folks.